techniques when it comes to opening your hips and doing some myofascial release. So I have a couple tools here. I have my regular foam roller, I have a cross ball, and I also have a rumble roller. Um, I'm not really going to show you what to do with the rumble roller because I'm assuming that most of you all don't have access to that, but really it's just an intensified version of the regular foam roller. So to start, I like to just do some gentle foam rolling, which basically means just kind of like rolling back and forth and just loosening up the glute ham like tie-in, like where those two muscle groups connect. And I like to go kind of like side to side, like this way, not just forward and back, but I'm um, getting a little bit of both in there. And then moving your leg, this is the key to like having a productive foam rolling session, is to move your leg in opposition of what you're doing. Because if you're just going like this, like moving back and forth, like yeah, this feels good, but this isn't necessarily like doing anything. So you want to make sure that you're moving that leg and working that muscle so that you really get all of the tightness out. And um, the main thing with these kind of exercises is that you're the detective. So for me, like a lot of my tightness is out here. So I'll take one foot into half lotus and then um, bring my weight over onto that area and roll it out. And then um, kind of like opening and closing, clamshelling my leg. And this is where the lacrosse ball comes in because like Although this feels good, I'm not in excruciating pain right now, which is an issue because if you're rolling, you want to be on that verge of excruciating pain and that's where you're going to find improvement. So after, you know, you're used to foam rolling and this feels good, you can move on to the cross ball, which is where your hips are really going to thank you. So like I said, you're the detective. So if what I'm doing doesn't work for you, then you need to find that spot that is excruciatingly painful and just stay there. So I'm going to start with it on my outer hip. And the more weight that you have on this cross ball, the harder it's going to be. So if you want to take it easy, you can bring your whole upper body down so that not as much weight is on the ball. But I like to, you know, torture myself a little bit and bring my body weight up. Sometimes I lift this leg and then I start clamshelling this leg. And you're going to feel that this is pretty intense. And um, like I said, everybody's different, but then I like to take my leg and do big leg circles. And I think that I have some like scar tissue built up in my hips and I can feel this like breaking up the scar tissue when I do this. And I mean, <laughs> it's quite difficult to talk while uh, sufficiently foam rolling or uh, lacrosse balling yourself because I mean, it's it's very, um, it's very painful in a good way. <laughs> Enjoy the pain. So yeah, so alternating between clamshelling and then doing a little roll, finding that really good spot and doing it again. And then doing some of the circles and then just keep moving and you're going to find several spots. Like there's one on your outer hip for me at least. And then, um, I go closer back to that glute ham connection and then I do some clamshelling there just to loosen that up and kind of just rolling around in some circles on the ball and then switching sides doing the same thing on the outer hip here and it feels great And so the more you do this, the more open you'll feel. And so last night when I took that picture of Lotus, I did it three times actually. The first Lotus you will see is not that great. And then by the third Lotus, I was very loose because I had spent almost 20 minutes doing this. And, um, and that's the key is consistency and really um, spending enough time each time you do it. It's not going to be like a 30 second thing. It's like you really have to get in there and you have to find that spot that is going to be the most, um, that's going to talk to you the most. So like I said, it's different for everybody. And I, um, I like to do the front of my hips too. So I start with it 
I mean, you can start wherever. I'm not really a pro at this, so I don't really know where to tell you to start or whatever. But um, so I put it like if my, this is like my hip where my bone goes in, I put it like right above it, and um, and that feels really great. And then bringing your weight up and kind of doing some circles here, and like um, you can't really see, but I'm bending and straightening my leg, and then doing some circles there. And then slowly bringing your weight around so that it's um, like in the front of your hip, right below your hip bone. And then doing some like bending and straightening here, doing some sideways stuff. And you're going to see what feels good for you and just keep doing that. And uh, eventually, here we'll switch sides, <clears throat> doing the same thing here. sure to breathe. Breathing is definitely important here. And then once you feel like you've had enough and you want to take your first shot at Lotus, the way that I was doing it, which gave it a little bit more accessibility to me, was to lay on my back so that I can work my hips a little bit better. And um, so the first thing that I was doing is really working this part. So like taking both hands on your foot and working your hip back. Because this is where it kind of comes from is that being able to have your hip open so that the twist isn't coming from your knees more so than your hips. So I like to bend and straighten here and really feel that stretch at the top, like right here. It's very tight. So, um, you know, just breathing into it and kind of taking it slow. And then doing the same thing on the other side. And both sides are different for everybody, so just play it by ear. Sometimes one side might need a little bit more tension than the other. Just do whatever feels good for you. I'm working it in all different directions. So we always start with our right foot and lotus. It's probably not going to be too great today because I didn't really spend any time warming up before this video. But um, so bringing it as close to like my face as I can and still like applying some pressure with my hand, but making sure that this is coming from my hip and not my knee. And then you want your heel close to your belly button. And I like to flex my foot so that I feel a little bit more grounded. And then bring this one over. And in. And then there we go. So this is not the tightest lotus, but this is actually pretty decent for me because usually it's hard for me to even get my feet onto my thighs. So I'm just staying here, which obviously doesn't feel great. But the longer you stay here and the more used to you get to being in this position, the easier it'll be to get in a little bit tighter. So and to come out, just wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. Slowly come out. I need to get a little happy baby. So, like I said, the more you work at this, the better it'll be. And um, if I were to do some more rolling right now, you'd see that my next lotus would get even tighter. And if I were to continue, my third lotus would be the tightest. But um, I don't want to bore you with lots and lots of rolling, but hopefully you've learned some techniques today that will help you open your hips. And also, I mean, you probably know this, but to take like pigeons, and try to bring that hip forward and just to, to chill out here. This is a good hip opener. And also to do like a double pigeon, like fire log, this one. This is a good one to help get you into Lotus and then making sure that you switch your legs. So I hope you've learned something today and I will continue to make videos of whatever you all ask me.